so that it almost goes fast into slow, fast for the transition, and then back to slow. The transitions are being made a lot uh, with the speed ramps, as I've been saying. So, you know, slow, fast, slow. What is going on guys? We are going to get right into it today. So in the previous video, I shot this cinematic coffee B-roll sequence. It was a fake advertisement for a local coffee company. I had a bottle of this sitting in my refrigerator and I decided to shoot a little coffee sequence and do a little YouTube tutorial uh, as I shot it. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go check that out first before watching this one. That's gonna show you how I actually came up with all my ideas and shot everything. This video is going to be giving you a full editing breakdown. Everything guys is in Final Cut. I don't know any other program besides Final Cut, but I do know Final Cut like the back of my hand. So if you are a Final Cut user, please stick around for the entirety of this video. There's gonna be a lot of useful tips and tricks in here, all done in Final Cut Pro. First things first, let's roll the video. All right, so here we are in Final Cut. The first thing that I went ahead and did is mute all of our sound design. It's actually pretty simplistic sound design. Uh, as you can see for this video, we're gonna cover that second. So first things first, um, we have all of our shots. This was only about a 15 second edit. And basically I'm just gonna break down every last little bit of this for you guys. So um, pay close attention. Uh, feel free to pause the video, rewind, uh, cause I might fly through this kind of quick. This first shot, if I go here and I remove the transform effect, and then I also have this TKY camera shake plugin up here. So I'm gonna also turn that off for right now just so you can see the normal shot. All right, so there's our normal clip. Again, the color grade is still on so we can see. Um, and then it does this zoom in transition. So the reason why I decided to do this zoom in, um, and as you can see, here's all my um, settings, it starts a little bit in, and then it goes all the way to about 122%, and it's also rotating just a little bit. Um, and I wanted to do this just so, you know, and then I added this shake plugin. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like without that. So that looks a little bit edited. You know what I mean? This the shake plugin sort of adds that, you know, slightly realistic feel to it where it's a little bit more wobbly, but on purpose. Um, Guys, these are small nuances that go a long way, especially when you're editing product videos where you don't wanna add that much effects in, but you wanna just give some sort of a spice up to your shot. Okay, so moving on, we have this zoom in transition. Um, I've created it so it was this far. Um, you know, as you guys know, you can move your transitions in and out depending on the desired uh, starting and ending point. So it zooms in and I've chosen to, here I'm just gonna actually delete this for one sec. So I've chosen to make sure that I had the right part of this next clip where the sun flares, again these were in camera sun flares using our sunset lamps which are currently lighting my background right now. Um, and I chose to start this clip right when the sun flares were hitting in the most aesthetic part. So I can actually click reveal in browser and you guys can see this whole clip and there was a lot of different attempts to uh, find a part, um, excuse me, there was a lot of different attempts to create what I see as an aesthetic sun flare here. Um, and this was just the part of it that I chose. Again, we've added a zoom in on this clip. If you guys notice the transform tool in the top right up here, um, this is going to be rotating and zooming a little bit and we're rotating it the same direction as the first clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo so we get our zoom in transition back. And also, just so you guys know, um, these clips are both, if we click the custom speed, these are both in 20% speed, um, and it looks like I've actually sped this up uh, to go into the next one. So again, guys, these are all these tiny, tiny little nuances that do affect the overall uh, edit at the end. So um, here, I just wanna turn on these, I wanna turn on these speed ramps just so you guys could see. So. The reason I've done these speed ramps, as you can see, this looks like it's 56%, uh, and then it goes to 20%, as these are 120 frames per second clips. 20% is the ideal speed for those clips to play back at 24 frames per second, because we're editing on a 24 frames per second timeline. Um, the, the reason I've done these speed ramps 
is so that it almost goes fast into slow, fast for the transition, and then back to slow. So this is a, a, a common trick that uh, one can do if you've shot your clips in slow motion. For product shots, I like to stick to shooting in a lot of slow motion just so I can create these transitions later. So although, you know, this is a drag and drop transition being used here, there are other things that are also helping the clip transition. One of those things being the speed ramp, another one of those things being the rotation. Um, and then, yeah, it just kind of all comes together. Okay, so moving right along, next clip we have um, a, a little sequence showing the bottle's details here, right? So the reason we have these next is to sort of uh, tell the viewer what we're looking at. So at least that was my intention. So this clip was filmed with the Lazy Susan. Um, so we have it spinning. And again, all of these clips, if you'll notice, are rotating the same direction. And they're rotating very subtly, very slowly, not too much into that same direction. And you'll also notice each of these clips, um, even though there is no transition made between each clip, they are speed ramped. Guys, understand that a lot of times, even though you can't see a transition uh, and, and actually be able to describe the sort of transition that you just saw, a lot of times in my videos, there actually is a transition taking place, but it's done subtly enough to where it's not actually distracting. As you can see, again, in this example, we have some speed ramp transitions being made. Uh, it starts out as it's very fast, just because our rotation was going very slow goes to 644%, it looks like, uh, and then 2,800%. So this seems really quick, but again, this Lazy Susan was rotating very, very slowly. Then over here, we have 600, uh, 854%, that's quite a bit, um, to, to all the way down to 20%. And that's because, again, these clips were shot in 120 frames per second, so we wanna slow them to their appropriate speed. And the reason I chose these portions of these clips, again, is because we had this light hitting the clip, again, from our sunset lamps, which were being used as our uh, key and fill lights for this, for this particular video. Um, and this is when I caught them, uh, the lights moving at the exact times that I wanted them moving. Here we have a nested clip, and I believe inside this nested clip, if you'll notice, there was a part of my lighting setup was using this mug to rotate in front of the light between the light and the bottle, creating this sort of rotating pattern on the bottle, as you see here. And so the reason uh, that I have this nested clip made here is because I have the top clip copied. And all I did was I put a draw mask on that top clip. All this does is track the bottle to make sure that mug is actually not in our shot anymore. So if, you, if the bottom clip was not there, it would just be this, right? This is a portion of this shot where the um, bottle or the mug, excuse me, was not in the right side of the clip here. Uh, because on our actual shot, the mug was there, and all I've done is put the draw mask on that, tracked it, and it is ro it is transform scaled in. Um, you just just a little post production zoom in at the exact same amount as the bottom one. Okay, so I'm gonna go out of this nested clip. Let's play back this little sequence just to see again what we have. So it kind of goes bam, bam, bam and then into the next clip. Guys, I know you've heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times before, story is king. Nothing matters if you don't know how to tell a story. If you can shoot cool clips, if you can, if you can edit really cool, if you can make cool transitions, none of these things really matter if you can't actually tell an effective story. Okay, so two shots, again, it makes sense that these are next to each other. The transition almost appears natural even though there is no transition in these clips whatsoever. These are both just uh, 120 frames per second clips, slowed down to 20% speed, one playing after the other, pretty simple. Moving on, we have a wider shot. Again, starting at 20%, filmed it at 120 frames per second. So we're gonna start at 20%, um, go up to 250% as the transition happens. And this entire clip is scaling out from 105, it's only one degree of rotation, to zero. Bam. Next clip here, just a little one, um, not really needed, but I liked the aesthetic of it, so we put it in anyway. Uh, this was a probe lens shot of the side of the glass. Uh, this glass is actually very small, but um, the probe lens sort of makes it fill the entire screen, as you can see. So same thing here, you kind of see the coffee going into the glass. You can't really see it that well, but 
I used the shot anyway. Uh, it was only, you know, uh, half a second shot, not even. So coffee goes up, goes up again. Now again, the transitions are being made a lot uh, with the speed ramps, as I've been saying. So, you know, slow, fast, slow. Slow, fast, slow. And then fast again to show the logo. This is a uh, post-production scale out that I was doing on all these, it looked like. Yeah, so I put this, um, this is an adjustment layer with a transform, scaling it out. Um, and then the logo appears, the way that I did this was I had a smoke overlay from Storyblocks. No, this video was not sponsored by Storyblocks, but what's up Storyblocks? And uh, we have the smoke overlaid with a draw mask, or excuse me, with a shape mask, so that it only is covering the Guardian's logo, right? Now, see this opacity is starting at zero of the smoke overlay, and it goes quickly to 100 once the logo has appeared. Now the logo is coming in with this, um, I wanna say it was a watercolor transition. Um, and again, these were from a pack of Ryan Nangle transitions. So I have transitioned to this just from nothing. So it's kind of a cool, uh, smoky looking way that the logo appears. And same thing with the logo, as is with the cup, it's scaling backwards to match. Okay, so diving into our sound design here, we have started off with our Epidemic Sounds song. No, this video is not sponsored by Epidemic Sounds yet. And what we can see here is there's a split. Now, the reason there's a split is because if I click reveal in browser, this is gonna show where I've started the song here. Now, you've already seen the video, so you know that this kind of sounds like the beginning of the song. It's actually not the beginning of the song, it's just a part where I sort of figured that it sounded like the beginning and I liked the way it sounded. Now, the reason you can't tell is because through, uh, you know, just a lot of practice and a lot of experience, I'm decently good at cutting up songs as a DJ would maybe, um, or, you know, a music producer maybe would, uh, so that it sounds like it fits. Even though if we do reveal in browser again, this part is not actually connecting with this part. So uh, let's hear what it would sound like really quick if this part was just all the way extended and we let it play out to the end of our video. Okay, so what you can see there is there is a beginning to the video, right? Because we have that sound where it goes mm, in the beginning, but we have no ending. So let's hear what happens if we just had the ending in there. So I'm gonna mute this clip for a sec. I'm gonna drag this out and we're gonna let you hear this. So now we have an end, but we don't have a beginning. So the idea here is you wanna find a point in your song where it sounds like there is the beginning, make sure you have the entire thing lined up, and then put it together with the part that sounds like it's the end. This is something that I do constantly, especially for product videos where I'm using an uncopyrighted song, and you want there to be a beginning and end to match the actual beginning and end of your video. Guys, I typically recommend doing this before you start your edit because this way your edit is guided uh, very naturally by the song you've already sort of created for your edit. Okay, let's actually mute this song again. Now we're just gonna listen to the uh, sound design with no song. So very, very, very simple sound design for this video, guys. We have one atmospheric whoosh that uh, is gonna make it fly into this. Then we have a bottle opening sound effect. Now, this to me was very important in this edit because we, we actually omitted the uh, cap coming off of the bottle. So again, for sake of story, we decided to just put a uh, beer bottle opening sound effect in there, just sort of thrown into the background. And to the viewer, at least in my opinion, this sort of acts uh, as like a really good makeup for not having uh, a shot of the actual bottle cap coming off. It's sort of like, oh, it was opened in the background, you just didn't see it. 
but it's still sort of acknowledging that, uh, you know, we thought about that. So to me, that was very important. Of course, we have our um, milk pouring sound effect. It looks like this came with a little milk emoji there. Um, and then at the end, we have our uh, dripping sound effect, which is, uh, looks like it's some cave water drips from Epidemic Sounds. So guys, very, very simple sound design for this video. Most of this edit was driven by the song, um, but just by adding a few sound effects, especially that pouring, uh, and like I said, especially that bottle cap sound in the background, uh, this just adds a lot of uh, production value to what the final thing looks like, in my opinion. All right, this is pretty much it for today. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If at any point in time you guys found value in this video, you guys liked it, found it entertaining, please give me a like. It helps a lot with the algorithm. Also, if you are a Final Cut Pro user and you're interested in more editing tutorials like this, we're gonna be doing a lot of that on this channel, so please give me a subscribe and turn on that bell notification uh, so you can know when I release another video. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video.